Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at two new VTXs from AKK. Now this is going to be just a part one overview. Part two will be the long range testing and seeing how well these perform in the field. Now currently the reason why I cannot do that just yet is because the weather is absolutely terrible. So let's get started. Now they've released other cool things that many of you probably haven't even noticed. They released two other VTXs which I'll have linked down below. One with an inbuilt DVR and another one that is a 2000 milliwatt VTX. Now you make sure you have your ham license in the European Union ham license version as well if you're going to be using that. Now AKK has been following its regulations for the European Union as well as the FCC blocking the specific channels which are illegal in the EU so you don't accidentally use those if you're in the European Union as well as the US. So you could see a US version and a uh, European version which means there's nothing wrong there's nothing different in the output power the only difference is in the channels that you're allowed to select which is really good in that perspective now let's take a look so here we have the FX2 ultimate mini now this is a stackable VTX which is something really nice also has a form factor which can be mounted somewhere if you just add a little heat shrink I wish they do provide heat shrinks though that is something what I, I would really actually like to see especially with these types of VTXs so we do have our mounting holes we have our button and our LEDs to give us the status here we have smart audio we have a 12 volt output and a 5 volt output this thing has two regulators on board and we also used to have the ground video ground and the input is 7 to 26 volts now be careful do not put your out your you know a 12 input on the output here or you have the chance of short circuiting the 12 volt regulator on board so they are using switching regulators now switching regulators are somewhat susceptible to noise but this is what we're seeing everywhere so it's kind of the norms ldo's are really not that efficient which are linear voltage regulators but they are less susceptible to noise but you know the, it just comes down to your quadcopters uh specs and how well you have it set up now let's take a look at something pretty interesting here now i really really hated the connectors you know the standard connectors for the vtx's they've gone through a couple over the year now and uh, what I really like seeing is just basically just pads for soldering it's going to be cheaper for them and a hell of a lot easier for us and this is what they did here and this is what I want to see on every other VTX that's coming out because personally I just hate these connectors and if I lose it I have to salvage one from another quadcopter because they're really not that easy to find and if you needed one you're going to have to wait at least two weeks to receive one which can be quite annoying. So this one's output power is to 1000 milliwatts. Now, some of you might say, well, we don't know if it really goes up to 1000 milliwatts, but I think we can. Personally, this is what I think. I think we can trust AKK because all they do is manufacture VTXs. Now, if they can't get this right, then there won't be a company. So obviously they're doing something good. And also something to take note of here. Now I have been testing the 2.4 gigahertz VTXs lately. And to be honest, I don't think we're ready for 2.4 gigahertz. I've actually switched it out on my long range testing setup. See, as you can tell, I, I removed it. I'm not using it anymore here. This is the Furious FPV. Uh, it, you obviously get longer range, that's for sure. But it's just, you know, the amount of interference that can happen is, is ridiculous. I mean, you have to be running at least at, a, you know, the Crossfire or R9M module because if you stick that with a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, you can have a lot of issues, which I noticed, which I did actually. So I can't really use that for my long range testing because it affects a lot of things. So what I ended up doing is going to AKK and picking up a couple. Now the ultimate is my favorite and um, soon I think it will be the Dominator. It's called the FX2 Dominator. I think I'll have it linked down below. It outputs at 2 watts, which is pretty crazy. Alright, so this is for the AKK FX2 Ultimate Mini, which is really nice. It's a little bit smaller than the... Uh, the ultimate two. Okay, so they also released this one here, and this is the FX3 Ultimate. As you can tell, we do have a microphone on board. So if you really like microphone, it does have smart audio as well. And um, overall, it looks like a really nice board. There is no shielding, so you know one thing shielding does is it shields against interference through your to your VTX from some some kind of noise or electromagnetic field. So this one doesn't really have one, and it's meant for a 20 by 20 stack. As you can tell, it has a 20 by 20 mounting holes here. And not only that, check this out. This is the first time I think I've ever seen this. They have an MMCX port and IPEX port, which is pretty crazy here. That's that's. Um, I mean, they're like, okay, we have a little bit of space. Why don't we just add another IPEX port? So that, that's kind of really nice to see. I don't know if that'll affect antenna, maybe something very slightly, but at the end result, it's uh, really nice to see here. So it just be, it just becomes more versatile here. And what they do provide you is they provide you with just one straight flush 
MMCX uh, connector here, not the 30, 90 degree angle. Now, I personally wish they do provide a 90 degree angle because I find that to be um, more universal in the types of spaces that we're sticking it in, especially in, for example, wings and even in quadcopters. You're gonna stack this through and you can't really bend it as you can tell here. So you have to, this, this is the amount of space that it's actually going to take. So if AKK, if you're watching this, Please provide with please provide these with 90 degree MMCX or even provide two one that's straight and one that's a 90 degree and I think a lot of people would really appreciate that um, and again let me know what you guys think down in the comment section so hopefully they'll see this also so this one here is the FX3 Ultimate and it does have smart audio and like I said IPEX port microphone MMCX port and it is up to 600 milliwatts here so that's really nice in that perspective and they're claiming that it can go up to two kilometers of range with an omnidirectional right hand circularized polarized antenna so that's nice in that perspective we do have a 5 volt regulator on board and it is a switching regulator here so here's the switching regulator area which is a 5 volt output this one has a 5 and a 12 volt output but again this one is stackable maybe for super light builds and again i really love the fact that they ditched the connector and they're using pads and i'm really starting to love this here another thing i wish i think they could have you know, move the components around a little bit for this one to incorporate some kind of a LED display instead of just the LED status lights. But even then, it's really nice to see the LED status because I've gotten some VTXs which don't have any kind of status and maybe sometimes you just did not connect the smart audio so you can't control it through your VTX. So this is something is a mandatory and a must in my opinion when I'm looking for a VTX personally. But I do prefer to have the uh, the LED display to tell me what channel I'm on but anyways that's still going to be very useful as long as you don't lose the documentation you kind of remember how everything is still working as you can tell here they're using the same scheme here for the button so that's really nice and also about the button this is a really good button it has uh, less chance of breaking unlike the ones that portray off the side maybe I have something around me the way I can show you yep here we go so some some companies use this button this one is the most easy button to I've broken so many in my life, uh, which I really don't like seeing this button on VTX is because more than likely you're gonna probably end up breaking it in a crash or trying to get to it or removing it and, and that really does happen. So to have the button secure in on the PCB has better contact to the PCB is a lot better this way. All right, guys, so this is currently going to conclude it for my overview of these two VTXs and do expect long range testing because this channel is going to be all about long range testing soon, as well as the ESC testing and the open hardware flight controller. If you haven't been watching my channel, check my open hardware, open FC uh, playlist, which you will be updated that I'll be showing you how to create your own flight controller with your own customized BECs servo whatever outputs anything you guys want and that's a really interesting project if you missed it go ahead and check the uh, links down below and check my playlist so overall they're really nice vtx's and i'll go ahead and leave a link to these as well as the two that i mentioned that i currently don't have which is one with a dvr and one that broadcasts at two watts which is pretty insane i really need to get some of the components here to actually test the output power of vtx's and i am planning 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 to get a proper spectrum analyzer in order to test these things like I usually do with ESCs and these things with the oscilloscope. So that'll make for more interesting video and a better proper review before doing long range testing. And that's going to include it for this video, guys. Make sure you check the links down below and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.